Junior's love in the bathtub. This is Kip here at Thousands of Roots. Second video I'm going to do on the sustainability challenge that we're going to do. Me and the boys had gone back and done some harvesting in our back pasture. That is wild edibles. But it's not just wild edibles. Um, there's more to it than that. And the geese are the two subjects that I want to talk about on the sustainability challenge video that we're doing today. You think about you know going out and harvesting wild edibles and how sustainable that is. That's very sustainable. But something that you can fast track that is if you find an area where they're, they're growing really, really well, you can go in there and kind of cultivate the area, work it, do some chop and drop in that area so you can favor the plants that you want to thrive in that area. And you favor them by going in there once, twice a year, doing a little bit of work. And so in our case, it's the black cap raspberries. We want to favor the black cap raspberries. So we go in there twice a year, chop and drop, chop everything else, use that as mulch. So we mulch around the black cap raspberries, then we favor them so we can get a harvest from the black cap raspberries every year, year by year with doing nothing except going in there and chopping and dropping. That's it. So then the other one is the geese. I did another video on the geese, why I feel the geese are the best prepper meat there is in the homestead. They're very sustainable. They can 100% survive off of grass. They guard their own young. You don't have to protect them. They're a very big, strong bird. And all you have to do is create a place where they feel comfortable nesting so that year by year they can hatch out their own goslings. If they have access to water, you got that covered. And so that's the geese. They're totally sustainable. Okay guys, these right here, these are black cap raspberries that are wild. And this whole area here, let's see if I can figure out how to highlight how big this area is. Now, the year before last year, there was just like four in here. And what I did is I came through here and I did chop and drop this whole area. And I, I chopped everything and I dropped it at the base of the ra black cap raspberries. And they have spread, they have tripled, would you say, Caleb? Mm -hmm. They've like tripled after we did that chop and drop once. So if we can do it again and tame this area a little bit, we can have our own wild patch of black cap raspberry, which is our favorite wild berry. Isn't that our favorite wild berry? Yep. Black cap raspberry, Nathan? Yeah. Is that your favorite wild berry? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So this is an example of something that's sustainable. This is wild. All we have to do is come and do some maintenance and help these black cap raspberries to thrive right here because they love this spot obviously so We're back here harvesting wild hazelnuts found one so this is a wild hazelnut back in our back pasture see these nice groupings here Okay, I'm going to cut off larger portions of this branch because these aren't quite ripe. But if we don't harvest them a little bit early, the wild animals back here will get them all. So if I harvest more of the branch, I'll leave them on the branch and let them ripen on the branch. This is my theory. I don't know if it's going to work for sure, but it works with a lot of other things. So I'm thinking it probably will. I like them. So I harvested all the way back to here because here's another cluster. So this has one, two, three, four, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hazelnuts on this one branch. Pretty cool. I would say this is a very sustainable thing. Finding what's already growing wildly and natively in your area, doing some maintenance, do some chop and drop around to help these trees thrive. Then harvest from them year by year and try to propagate and reproduce more and more from them. Alright guys, just wanted you to see this. Our neighbor's done with their garden. So, 
we decided to open the gate up and let the geese out. And look at the geese just running for the open gate. <laughs> they must be semi-content in here. Let me open it wider for them even. Right. My goosies. Oh, Daddy Goose. He just noticed it. So they've been in here like three, four months, Nathan? Yeah. And you've been having to bring them all their food and all their water, huh? Yeah. If we let them out this gate here, then, th can... then what? Then I won't have to water them, I'll just have to feed them. How are they going to get their water then? Go down to the creek pond. Creek or pond. Will you have to feed them? Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, huh? You want to go in there and pressure them out? Okay. You don't only have to scare them, just kind of just get behind them and pressure them a little bit. Think they're happy to be grazing it again? Yeah. They're grazing on the driveway. You think these geese are sustainable? Yeah. Pretty cool. So this is after we let the geese out. They came out, did a little bit of cruising, went down to the creek, took a little bath, and they came right back up. They came right back up on their own. They are not anxious to get away from us. They know this is their home. They obviously like it here. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Real quick, wanted to show we had um, Ozark Off Grid talk about they thought the duck prints were funny. Well, look in our shop here. These are geese prints all over the shop foundation. Right after the guy who was working on this poured it, he walked out of here and the geese just came and trampled all over. Now I'm going to show you two more places where these silly geese came and walked on our cement work. Okay, so this is a this is a little walkway here up into our patio and look what the geese did here the geese came and walked right through here right after it's poured it's like the cement's poured they've got to come walk on it now this was the first one see these prints <laughs> they walked single file this was extra cement after one of the pours that we did. And they came all the way up it, single file. It's so funny because there was no cement here, all the way up. No, they couldn't walk there. They had to come up the cement. And they couldn't walk off to the side over here. No, nope, couldn't do that either. They had to go right up the middle. You know that saying, those silly geese? I know where that saying came from. 
because these geese are silly. Geese are silly. They do silly things. All right, guys, this concludes our second video that we've done on the sustainability challenge. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. Again, the best thing you can do for us is to share our videos. Our subscribers, you guys, I can't say thank you enough to our subscribers. We are so pleased that you find the time to watch us and we really do try hard to give you valuable content that's worth your time. We do try to do that each and every time. This is Kip with Thousands of Roots. Whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. Okay. Now what does that say? Joshy, what's that say? Thousands of Roots. Thousands of Roots and Look how many subscribers there are. A thousand subscribers. Anything you want to say to our subscribers? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the thousand subscribers. How can you Esther Pie? Scooter. And here's the crew over here. Anything you want to say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Say again. Thank you for watching. Thank you.